vlog, I'm Asuka and welcome to the 2023 Lori Wired Halloween special where I'm gonna rate your sorting algorithms because you think that you can outdo decades of research and come up with an even more optimal sorting algorithm. Let's see, at least they've stuck to the proper functions, but I don't know what I am looking at. Okay. So I see you're trying to be clever and you're trying to use hexadecimal names of your variables. However, if this was production code, I would fire you immediately and I would probably kick you on your way out. This is not how you code when you're trying to show your programming skills to another person. If I wanted my variable names to be this nondescript, I probably would have had my dog write them and just slam his paws on the keyboard. And you think you're being so clever with all of these pointers and yeah, maybe you know what you're doing, but if I saw this code and I was trying to use it at work, we would probably get in a fight right then and there. Also, your indentation is just way too much. I think you're using like three tabs it looks like. Let me see. I can't tell. But anyway, too much. I think your program is gonna go off the screen if you keep tabbing like this. Let's say you have a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop. Your loop's gonna be off the screen once I actually get to that farthest inner loop. You even included hard-coded memory addresses. And honestly, I have no idea where you got this number from. So I'm gonna have to run it and see if this actually works. It compiles, it compiles. Okay, it seems to be working. It's still going. Is this even doing anything? Ooh, Mr. I'm so smart. I'm gonna use hexadecimal characters as my variable names. They have also decided to include hard-coded memory addresses so that this only works on x64 operating systems. And then they give me this sorting algorithm and it is still going. And I don't think that it's doing anything. I'm gonna take this sorting algorithm and start playing this in a coffee shop so I can drive everybody crazy around me. All right, we're done with that. What am I looking at right now? And why do I hate you so much? <laughs> this is all the, all the digits of pi in the universe. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Ah, I can't even- I can't even find my mouse! Because it's stuck in the numbers. I got this little tiny cursor. I'm gonna need another gummy worm if I'm gonna get through all of this. Okay. Pi sort. Yeah, okay, I got that. All the digits of pi in a sorting algorithm. Sorting algorithm that assumes that there must be a pattern inside the digits of pi, which puts me- <laughs> which puts the given array in ascending order. So as far as I know, there is not a pattern of pi that anybody has discovered. This is like mathematicians from the dawn of time have been trying to find a pattern and there isn't one. So you're assuming you can change the universe for your sorting algorithm. Oh, I found the code. Hey, and he even stuck to the methods that I provided. Fn print array, fn sort. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to scroll all the way up again because I can't remember what this was even defined as. Not that I can read Rust anyway, but I'm doing my best. This was defined as a static string because that's how I want all my integers defined. This is probably a genius algorithm. And honestly, I'm just too impatient to read that. So maybe the fault's on me here, but I don't think so. I really think the fault's on you for just making it too long. Why didn't you put the digits of pi in maybe a separate file? Then I would have actually tried to read it. Maybe, maybe. I am still copying. Now, if this one doesn't compile, I'm gonna be very disappointed because I have super, super high hopes for this one because it is literally just the first million digits of pi used to sort this list. Let's build this. Oh man, you gave me errors. This guy just crashed my notepad plus plus. All right, this is still running now. I can't use my own print function because you've given me an incompatible type and it's still printing to the screen. I think my hopes for PySort are quickly going down. PySort done. I'm not sold. I think PySort probably runs on big O of N to the million digits of pi 
but not adding the decimal point. Next submission. Okay. We got Halloween wannabe here, trying to be spooky. This person finds certain digits spooky. So <laughs> we're learning a lot of things today that we didn't know were spooky. So some digits are inherently spookier than others. Even numbers are not spooky at all. Odd numbers are spooky in the order 37195. Oh, okay, so that's the odd digits that are spooky. <laughs> so I think three is the most spooky and five is the least spooky, or maybe I have that the other way around. Maybe five is the most spooky and three is the least spooky. I really don't know how you came to this conclusion. So values are sorted normally, then sorted by spookiness based on digits in the singles place. Using this logic, numbers will be sorted from least to most spooky. <laughs> you know, I think this is on me because to be fair, I did not specify how I wanted the numbers sorted. I just said I want the, wanted them sorted. So I think this person is really thinking outside the box here. Everybody else sorted them from least to greatest in their value, but nobody else took the time to sort them by spookiness. This person is using single letter variable names, but I will let it slide just because of the creativity of the submission. But I really want to see what this is going to look like when I'm running it inside of my sorting visualizer, because if it's not even sorting it from least to greatest, it's just going to look like craziness. I wonder what a spooky graph looks like. Thank you for sticking to my naming conventions. You're one of the few. Let's for real see how spooky my numbers are. Come on, that's not spooky at all. Oh wait. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you sort them first. And then they start going out of order. <laughs> I really don't think this is very efficient. Kind of makes some cool sounds though. Okay, this is making some cool graphs and some cool noises. Actually, this worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was just going to be totally random numbers all over the place, but it is sort of almost sorted. Okay. All right, this one is giving me an entire backstory. Tokyo 3 sort. <laughs> Shinji attempts to defeat Israfel. Sort sort the integers, but Asuka has to finish the job with the spear of Onginus. Build G++ W wall Tokyo 3 CPP. Nope. I'm a noob, had to hack in some printing functionality to track the array throughout, quick sort algorithm. Okay, don't judge this pen pen too harshly for poor... Oh, I'm gonna judge. <gasps> Shin Shinji and Asuka sorting a thousand random ints. Asuka single-handedly sorting a thousand random ints. And then another time estimation. You know what? I'm feeling generous, so I'm gonna give you like plus a hundred points just for the backstory because it was really thorough. Nobody else gave me a backstory. That was really good. Mm. And mm, instead of leaving actual comments in your code, you gave me more parts of the story. This is excellent. And I think that we should use this kind of technique going forward as all programmers. Instead of using actual comments, you should write an entire novel inside of the comments section of your code and spread it out between every single different method. That way, this is going to be the most entertaining book ever. And you have to literally write like 30 different applications just to get through your entire novel. <laughs> your method names are also named based off of the characters of Neon Genesis. I don't even think I can give you enough points for that. This is perfect. You get like plus a million points. Asuka obviously considers Misato lesser than herself. Yes. Asuka places herself above Misato in all regards. Yes. Okay, so what this has is this has two different methods. We have Shinji sort and we have Asuka sort. But Shinji sort is just lazy and doesn't do more than a third of the teamwork. 
That's accurate. Really, I hold up the entire team. Asuka, aggressive quick sort. Yes, this is accurate. <laughs> Using the Spear of Longinus to track the array state. <laughs> okay, this, this was, that was a really good one. I gotta move on to the next one. Enterprise sort. Enterprise IR dedicated for custom sorting algorithms. Highly <laughs> highly versatile and JIT friendly. A cloud solution. <laughs> the saddest part is, is I know you could totally sell this in real life. A cloud solution is available for users without the Enterprise Pro license. You know, I've always wanted an enterprise solution for my sorting algorithms because this is actually really genius. And this is how you can charge customers even more inside of your cloud-based solution. You can charge them for the more efficient and faster programming sorting algorithms. This way, if the customers are not paying enough, they have to run a big O of N squared. The main selling point of this is that it's highly versatile and JIP friendly. LC deprecated. Can't remember what this one does. Okay, I appreciate the honesty. That's exactly what I want to see in my enterprise code. Can't remember what this one does. Yeah, this does look like real enterprise code because of the amount of constants inside of this and just the amount of else ifs and the lack of spacing and the lack of comments. Yes. This evaluates the custom sort algorithm, currently faster than all other sorting algorithms. High-speed JIT API. You're definitely a salesman, aren't you? Because like, the code could do absolutely nothing, but the way that you're selling this inside of the comments is really making me want to buy this. JIT API has been deprecated since 13.02. Based on how this is written, is this actually part of a real application? Did you really, I don't know, steal code from somewhere and submit this to the Lori Wired 2023 Halloween Sorting Challenge? Because it's written exactly like all of these enterprise solutions are normally written. Please, I really hope that you just made this up because if this is real, I'm gonna be really sad. And there's a to-do inside of it? This has to be real. All enterprise sort variables must be prefixed with L underscore. Why? Why are there random magic numbers inside of this? What is this array? L underscore sort with lookup dot params. And then it's just an array that has 1,427, 818, 356, 196. What does that even mean? And there's more. There's like a million of these different arrays that are just full of magic numbers. You don't even explain what they are. What are they doing? Are these supposed to be example cases that you're gonna practice sorting? I don't think so based off your variable names. Also, you didn't even use underscores or camel case inside of these variable names. So it just looks like a jumbled mesh. If I like spoilers, here's what the de-enterprised algorithm looks like. I'm gonna follow the bait. And that's how Lori Wired accidentally installed ransomware. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like this big versus this big. And it's going to some sketchy IP address. Who knows what this is doing? I am not going to that IP address, no matter <laughs> no matter how much I want to. It's going to the IP address and opening the URL and then importing whatever data is returned from the URL and reading that and then printing that. You're literally just copying your own data from your own random IP address and then printing that data to the screen. Well, you're gonna fail the visualization challenge. I guess I need to buy the enterprise version to use it. <laughs> All right. That was good. I I'll give you that one. I think that one might win for creativity. I don't know. Note at the top. 
This sorting algorithm does not handle duplicates and negative numbers correctly. <laughs> Next one. So now let's move on to pancake sort. This is, yet again, another Rust submission. And it looks like the person who wrote this took a severe dislike to how I wrote my print array function and decided to comment the entire thing out and re-implement their own version in a proper Rust mannerism. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm a C++ developer, so I don't know the proper Rust fashion that you decide to write your 60,000 different ways of using a print statement. They have even commented out my print array function that is supposed to work iteratively and print out every single iteration of the loop and just said no. <laughs> Pretty print. I'm sorry, but your uwu speak is not helping your case here. Your algorithm is running pancake sort, so it's basically breaking up the array into a ton of different pancakes of continuously decreasing size and sorting by the max number first. Now, this will run on big O of n squared. I think if Shinji was a sorting algorithm, he'd be pancake sort, takes forever, and constantly flips back and forth. I have gone to the trouble of fixing your code. You told me that you would not write the print function for every iteration, but you know what I say to that? I can comment out your code and comment mine back in. Yeah, it's okay. But it's not really any better than the bubble sort implementation that I added by default. Here's my verdict of pancake sort. Well, even though not everybody can be an expert in sorting algorithms like I am, in fact, some of you put in almost no effort at all, I still really appreciated all of the submissions. Now, some of you did submit really creative and unique submissions that actually had a pretty good time complexity, so only because of that, I'm feeling generous, so all of the featured submissions are going to receive prizes. Cheers, everyone, and I hope you have some new creative sorting algorithm ideas. So that's all for today. Work on your sorting algorithms.